Okay, let's start then. Uh, so welcome everyone. And today we are happy to have uh, uh, Nisan Itsaki from Tel Aviv University, and he will speak about uh, puncture in the Euclidean black hole. Uh, please start. Thank you. Um, so it's uh, great uh, to give this talk. Um, and this talk is based on a work that um, Rami Brushten, uh, Midgivon, and Yoav Zigon and myself uh, published, uh, uh, appeared on the archive uh, yesterday. Um, sorry, but I have a certain problem here. Strange. A minute ago it worked. Okay. Yes. So, uh, yes. So, thinking about the uh, cigar geometry is a very, uh, well, historically, it, it's proven to be a very useful thing um, when trying to um, understand black holes. So uh, the cigar geometry is the geometry that we get when we analytically continue uh, the eternal black hole into Euclidean space. And it looks um, like that. So we have a cylinder at infinity. And um, well, here there is a tip to the cigar and that tip is, so. In the Euclidean case, it's a point, but that point, when you analytically continue it back to Lorentzian signature, it's the horizon. So basically, this is, this is the region outside uh, the black hole. That's it. It's analytically uh, continued to the cigar. So uh, this was, uh, of course, used uh, long ago. So uh, for example, um, um, Gibbons and Hawking used it um, to uh, derive some properties of the black hole, some thermodynamical properties of the black hole. And then, um, well, Arthur and Hawking um, used it uh, to uh, say something very concrete about the wave function of uh, fields in the uh, black hole uh, geometry. And the way this works is that, so here is the cigar. And what, they, what you do is you uh, slice the cigar, so you in the middle, and you see this uh, red line. This is the left part. It goes here, the right goes there. And then you analytically continue, and you can uh, um, study not only a classical uh, uh, geometry is this, this way, but also uh, quantum effects. And more recently, uh, um, this was also used to derive uh, the page curve um, using some extra um, uh, Euclidean solutions. Oh, I see. So when I use the pointer, okay. So in string theory, when we have a, a cigar geometry, then because we have strings, then there are also uh, winding modes that can wrap the cigar. So here is a, a, a string that is wrapping the cigar. Oh. And um, well, we uh, basically a question that we would like to ask ourselves is what is the effect of this uh, winding mode? On, on black holes after uh, we continue it back to um, to uh, Lorentzian geometry. But so this is one question. Uh, the other question, which will be uh, the main topic of uh, the first half of this talk, is what is the effect of this uh, winding mode on the cigar geometry. So we can think about the cigar geometry, just focus on the Euclidean setup. Normally, the Euclidean setup is much simpler to study and we can ask ourselves, what is the effect of this uh, mode on this uh, geometry? Um, 
So if you think about a, a, a generic black hole, it is very hard to address this question precisely. And the reason is that, um, so, so this is the same cigar. And here what I'm doing is, you know, this uh, shaded region, this is a string that is wrapping the cigar all the way starting from the tip and it's reaching a certain point, which we uh, refer to as a row. And the wave function of that string, we can estimate it when the string is uh, far from the tip, you would expect it to uh, go like, uh, you know, the exponent of a uh, minus uh, the action of the, the Nambugoto string that is wrapping the, the that is um, covering this uh, shaded region. And now, uh, of course, if we want to do what this wave function is doing to the cigar, then uh, we need to know uh, the details of this wave function, and we need to know the details of its coupling to, uh, you know, the dilaton, the, 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 the graviton, etc. And we uh, just don't know, we, we don't have this information in general. Um, so uh, all of these details that we would like to have, we just don't have them because this is a non-perturbative effect. And, you know, so um, people, you know, like uh, Arkady and others, they studied uh, the perturbative alpha prime corrections to, um, to backgrounds, but to uh, pinpoint uh, exactly what is the uh, non-perturbative effect in alpha prime, what are the non-perturbative effects in alpha prime are, this is very, uh, very difficult in general. But this is where uh, uh, this model that I'm going to focus on, the SL2 um, level K modded by U1, this is where it becomes extremely, extremely useful. And uh, the reason is that in that model, we can do more than just uh, um, say, uh, you know, uh, this is the, th these are the leading perturbative alpha prime corrections. What we can do is we can even discuss uh, non-perturbative effects. And these non-perturbative effects are, are exactly these uh, strings that are winding, that wind the, 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 the cigar. Uh, so, um, so for that reason, what I'll do in this talk is I, I'll focus uh, on this model. Um, and I will, you know, I can, I don't, I can make conjectures about other cigars, uh, but I cannot prove them. And I don't have anything too concrete uh, that I can actually uh, support um, uh, in this talk. So, um, so this is not that bad, it's not ideal, that's for sure. We would like to be in a position in which we can say, you know, uh, this is what happens to uh, Schwarzschild black holes, etc. We are not there, but uh, this model uh, is not a, such a bad model. This is the near horizon limit. So this scale, the level, uh, it's actually it's the near horizon limit of K near extremal NS5 brains which are, uh, you know, black holes in 10 dimensional a type two a string theory. And if we can say something very concrete about them, then we can conjecture that whatever it is that we find in this, uh, uh, in this case is relevant also for uh, other black holes that, you know, the kind that we uh, like, uh, that we like more. Uh, Nissan, <clears throat> um, may I ask you a question? So it, it's probably unrelated, but <clears throat> uh, this wave function is looks similar to Wilson loop in ABS, where you <laughs> yes, have yes, yes. a minimal surface. On that's, the... that's right. So so uh, very good. So so indeed. Uh, so uh, um, you know. So I guess that you you are referring to um, in ADS five, for example, you can think about the uh, Polyakov uh, um, 
the Polyakov loop, and this is uh, the bulk. Um, this is the bulk uh, um, uh, um, excitation that is relevant for this loop. Um, yes, so so, so uh, I'm not sure. So, so it's a very it, first of all, it is related. Um, but uh, I don't have much uh, to say about that. And the reason why I don't have much to say about it is that uh, we don't really know um, what to do with the, with the uh, Polyakov uh, uh, loop. Um, so I, I cannot, uh, um, you know, uh, um, so, so it's, it's very well defined when the tooth coupling is small, but when you go to strong tooth coupling, I don't have any sharp uh, predictions about it. And this is exactly this is exactly the kind of uh, uh, reasoning why uh, this model is so useful because here um, we, we'll uh, say a little bit about it uh, later. You, you have the algebraic structure which is really giving you lots of information that at least I don't know how to uh, um, find um, um, in for black holes in IDS five. But of course, it would be great to be able to do it. So, uh, sorry, uh, can I ask a naive question? Uh, yeah. So, can you speak about uh, winding modes of a string if it's not in two plus one? So, I don't quite understand. I, uh, I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? Like, how do you define a winding mode if it's not like in two plus one dimensions? So I would, so you have a center of a black hole, right? The string can wind around it only if it's uh, two plus one or? Oh, no, no, it's not. I, so I, I'm sorry. I, first of all, I have a technical problem here. I'm, uh, I, I'm having trouble going back. I can only, this is not, so um, I'm sorry about that. Um, it's not my usual setup. Um, so yes, so 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 here, what the string is doing, it's wrapping. So so you have a, an S one, okay, and you have a radial direction. Now that radial direction is the radial direction that is associated with the uh, radial direction in the black hole, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, this S1 is the S1 that you get when you analytically continue uh, Schwarzschild time or the external observer time, uh, more generally. Well, if you analytically continue it, you find that uh, the new coordinate has the periodicity, and that periodicity is related to the fact that the temperature, that the, the, the black hole has a temperature, and this is uh, this S1. Once you realize that you have an S1, then in strength to you, it, there will be modes that can wrap this. Yeah, yeah, okay, uh, okay. I see, thank you. Okay, uh, sorry if I wasn't clear. Um, so, where was I? Yes. So, uh, okay, so, so what uh, we'll do is I'll, so what I'll do is I'll start with the uh, orovitz polchinski action that is uh, relevant for, um, that uh, describes, so in this, uh, the details of the action are not important. I'm just, you know, writing it down to, uh, so it will be clear that there is a very uh, sharp uh, starting point to the discussion. So in this action, you have the dilaton and you have, um, you know, you have, you have the curvature. So you have the metric, which appears here as well. And the winding mode is the sky field. And uh, normally people like to use, so if you look, for example, on the original paper of Horowitz and Polchinski, or if you even go uh, further back to Attic and Witten, then this, uh, um, um, effective action is useful or oh, you can trust it uh, for sure you can trust it when uh, a beta is close to the um, to the agadon temperature and what we would like to do is to use a version of it which i will uh, describe uh, momentarily 
uh, when k is large. When k is large, the uh, beta is much, much larger than the uh, eigenvalue temperature, which means that this, uh, uh, the radius of this uh, uh, circle at infinity is much, much larger than one in string units. Okay, so normally, normally, you would think that this is a very bad idea. And there are good reasons for that. And the reasons is that the only reason why uh, Orovitz and Polchinski uh, work with this action and they focused on, um, you know, this winding uh, a plus minus uh, uh, um, modes and they ignore the rest of the winding modes is that when the circle is close to the, when the temperature is almost uh, is just below the uh, the eigenvalue temperature, then this mode is very light, and other higher winding modes are very massive, and you it makes sense to ignore them, you know, in the spirit of effective fit theory. And another thing that you, that is happening here is that um, you see you have only the leading kinetic term here and here, and you ignore all higher uh, other higher order terms and uh, this is also justified only when you are near a eigenvalue because otherwise what happens is that the fields they vary uh, um, quickly near the tip and you uh, must include higher derivatives so uh, so our starting point um, well doesn't feel right. It feels like we are giving too much um, credit to this action if we are taking uh, when when we take k to be large. Now, what uh, and, and this is yet another example. Um, so let me uh, step uh, uh, back. So if 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 I so so part of the reasons why I cannot uh, repeat what I'm about to tell you. Uh, for Schwarzschild black hole is that I don't know how to answer these questions in the Schwarzschild black hole. But in this uh, SL2 modeled by U1 black hole, I, I have uh, answers to this question. And the answer is basically, uh, if you will, uh, heuristically, it's the FDZ duality, the Fadev and Zamalogical duality. And uh, this duality is a uh, important uh, here um, for uh, several reasons, and I'll try to, uh, to explain why, uh, why uh, um, it makes the use of uh, this, uh, uh, or a version of this action, uh, which I'll describe uh, momentarily, um, uh, meaningful. So basically what uh, um, uh, FCZ is uh, uh, teaching us is that when you think about um, so 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 if you stare at this action, you see that you know you have the dilaton, you have the graviton, and you have this extra winding mode. But FZZ is telling you that actually this is not the case. Um, the winding mode, the winding one mode, uh, plus one modes are related to this uh, um, to the graviton and the dilaton or the zero modes of them in a very um, peculiar way in the sense that um, semi-classically they appear to be different. It appears that semi-classically would think that you have this sky mode and you have this uh, dilaton mode, but actually the, uh, the, uh, the full algebra of the SL2 uh, relates these modes and the, 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 the right way to think about it is that, you know, these are two semi-classical um, semi-classical uh, wave functions of the same exact mode in the CFT. And, and this is the reason, this is the reason. So for example, uh, uh, the, the way it works is that only the winding one mode plus one uh, plus minus one modes are related to uh, these modes um, via the FCZ duality. So this is the reason why they should be included and higher mode 
should not be included. And this is correct for any K, even if K is very large. Um, and can I have a question? Does the, yes. Can this K be uh, just be one? Yes, when K is equal to, very good. So when K, uh, uh, K equals to one are, uh, is a very special point. This is the, the point where uh, you have the eigenvalue transition. Okay, and uh, I'm not going to focus on that point here, but I'll, uh, uh, um, um, the transition. So for sure, for sure, if I, if K is very close to one, then I, can, I should be able to trust it. But what I'm trying to say is that you can trust it even when you're far from one. And the transition that people uh, like to talk about, you know, uh, from a string star to, um, to, uh, um, to uh, a black hole in that, this setup is happening at k equal to one. This is something that uh, uh, Gibbon and Kutasov and collaborators uh, studied uh, many years ago in that, in that uh, case. I'll, I'll, I'll mention it uh, if, uh, if we have time uh, later on. Uh, could you <clears throat> try to explain what is FZZ duality? Because there are probably not many people know. Uh, well, I can. Uh, the question is, uh, how many? Uh, so, uh, yes. So, FZZ duality, well, originally uh, it was uh, this statement that I can either study uh, the conformal field theory uh, associated with the cigar geometry or I can study uh, the cylinder with a winding mode and the two CFTs are the same. Um, a, a more a, a, a stringy version of it is that when you study uh, string theory on, uh, on the cigar, on this SL2 model by one cigar, then you should take into account also this winding mode and that winding mode is always there because it is related to these uh, to these modes uh, via the SL2 transformation or the spectral flow uh, of uh, in the SL2 algebra so um, unfortunately well I can switch uh, uh, you know I can well I have here <laughs> Uh, different talk about that, but uh, I would like, so, so what I think that what will happen in this talk is that we'll see that uh, in the equation of motion that you get from this, there is a, a needed miracle, which is basically the FZZ duality. So I'll, I'll, I'll do that, but the, but the FZZ duality is much deeper than what I'm about uh, to show you in this talk. And uh, unfortunately, I think that to, to, to do it properly, I'll take, uh, I'll need uh, uh, lots of time. Um, for one say that uh, if you could have some kind of string theory formulation for this model, hmm. with all modes included, yes, you would see some symmetry on the, in this section of string theory, which would be. That's right, that's right, that's right. So this is, of course, a big, big challenge. And as you know uh, very well, the uh, string field theory for uh, closed strings is, uh, is a big, big challenge. But, but the answer is yes. And I think that at the level of equation of motion, I'll show you evidence for that in a second. OK? But what you're asking is much, uh, much more sophisticated than the level of discussion that I'll uh, present here. Sorry, may I ask a question uh, about oh, the sure. previous? Yes, uh, this chi field, um, has it any interpretation from the string uh, uh, field contents? Is it like uh, coming from a dimensional reduction of some components of the metric? Uh, or, so, uh, guy, so I apologize. So this is me not explaining very well. This chi field, chi is the W, it's winding in one direction. Mm -hmm. Chi star is winding in the opposite direction. I, I should have been very clear about that. And th thanks for asking because apparently I wasn't. So I, I apologize for that. Uh, 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 other, other questions? I, I, I just wanted to make sure this, this G tau tau uh, that appears in this mass term of this um, uh, windy mode is, is, uh, is a bigger than one. 
What do you are talking about this uh, this must this term master? Yeah, yeah, this G tau tau list and uh, the time and direction of the matrix. Right, right, right. So this happens because um, so let this happens because actually in this picture you see that the, the string winds this direction. So how much energy it has depends on how large that circle is. So here it is cheaper. Here it's more expensive to have a, a string, a string, a winding mode. This is the this is the the uh, origin for this uh, master in the Orovitz Kolchinsky um, action. Yeah, I just yeah. So I just want to make sure if k equals one, then hmm. this and the winding mode became taken, right? So so the mass the mass term uh, the the mass became a uh, mass square became negative. No, oh, so when k equals to one, it becomes massless. Massless. Okay. Massless. Yes. So when k is smaller than one, then it becomes. Uh, uh, I see. I see. Uh, Thanks. So uh, well, yes. So we have said that. Yes. So 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 the little miracle uh, uh, is. Is, is the following. So if you uh, just write down, so uh, the equation of motion, so I start with this action and I write down the equation of motions, uh, the equations of motion, then this is what I get. Uh, the details are not terribly important as you can uh, imagine, but I, the only thing that I do want to uh, explain is that this age, so uh, phi, phi is the dilaton, chi is our uh, winding mode, and age, age is this uh, g, uh, age square is g tau tau, and I'm using this kind of uh, metric. So rho is the invariant distance uh, from the tip of the cigar, and uh, age squared is g, g tau tau. Um, so, so you see that you get, as you can imagine, you, you get second order equation, and in particular, you see that a chi gets, well, it's a second order equation and this is no big surprise because, uh, uh, because our starting point, you know, we have a kinetic term like this. So of course we should get uh, something that looks like that. And again, the details are not, are not uh, that important. Um, what is interesting is that, uh, uh, so, 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 this equation, this, this equation that I marked in red is not consistent with what I told you before about FZZ. Because FZZ is telling you that chi is not independent. So it cannot be that I have, uh, uh, that it has an independent kinetic term. It must be somehow related to these other fields in the problem. And this equation is telling you that, you know, it's a free field, um, not free, it's, 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 uh, it's a, a field with a, with a kinetic term which freely propagate in this background and that makes no sense from the FZZ point of view. Um, and if FZZ is, is correct, and we have very, very good reasons by now to, uh, to think that FCC is correct, then I, we should be able to reduce these complicated equations, this set of complicated equations into a first order equation. And this, is, uh, this turns out to be the case that I can replace all of this by these first order equations. And what I mean by that is that you can, you can actually prove that any solution to this first order equation is a solution to these uh, equations that follow from Orovitz and Polchinski. And for us, um, as a, a, um, you know, string theorists that uh, believe um, that in the SL2 modeled by U1 uh, um, case, we have an algebraic uh, structure that is telling us that FZZ should be correct. Um, this is what from this moment on we'll work with. Okay, so this set of equation uh, is the equations that uh, we'll uh, explore. Um, and this is uh, um, uh, 
it's not exactly what Arkady, what you ask for, because of course this is not string field theory, etc. But but this is the reduction that we see in the uh, equation of motions. But but this this looks like special. It, it's it may not be general solution. It's a special solution. It's like this That's BPS. Right. That's right. Like BPS. That's right. Very good, very good. Very good. So, so you can see. So even if you set a, a chi to be zero. If you set chi to be zero, you can see that you have here the solution, which is the cigar. And this is no surprise because in dilaton gravity in two dimensions, uh, there are no propagating modes. So what we did is that we, so to begin with, there are no propagating modes. And then you add this uh, uh, chi field and uh, you would think, well, it has, uh, you, know, you see here that, you know, it has a normal kinetic term, et cetera, et cetera. But SDZ is telling you that this should not be the case. So you should somehow be able to replace this. And this is what replace it. And you see that the equation of motion of chi is almost topological. Now you are right that there are many solutions to this that are not solution to that. This is clear. And like you said, this is uh, uh, in the spirit of uh, BPS uh, reduction. And uh, so if you will, what we are saying is that um, FZZ is telling you that this is the reduction that you should uh, uh, use. Yes. Now, this equation is very interesting because uh, this equation is telling you that the wave function for the winding mode should go like uh, e to the minus uh, um, the action of the uh, Nambugoto, uh, the Nambugoto action everywhere, not only far from the uh, tip, but everywhere. And this is correct, including the back reaction of the winding mode. So. Uh, this is a very uh, uh, encouraging uh, uh, equation to have. It, it, it tells you that probably we are on the right track when we are reducing the equation of motion to this. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll have much more evidence for this uh, um, in a little bit. Now, uh, strength theory and or uh, strength theory or non-perturbative effect in strength theory uh, or FCZ, if you will, uh, is telling you more in, stre in strength theory, we should be able to fix the boundary condition of this mode uh, um, uh, exactly. And we should be able to do it not only in this cigar, but um, what is, like I said at the very beginning, what is special about this cigar is that here we can actually do it, okay? Because we have control over the theory. So, um, so what we, so what I, I'll do is I'll basically, I will solve or I'll show you a solu the numerical solution of this a set of equations as a function of the amplitude at infinity. And we'll see that something very interesting is happening at a very particular point when you vary, um, when you vary the amplitude at infinity. And what's uh, kind of remarkable is that this uh, uh, um, special point that you find from the numerical analysis of this equation is exactly what string theory is telling you that the amplitude should be. Okay, so this is, I, I think, a very uh, strong evidence that we have that um, uh, going back to uh, uh, whether this uh, reduction is justified or not, that this reduction is uh, justified. Okay, so uh, this is a really a, a technical a thing, and uh, we hope that we should do uh, better than that. But uh, uh, for technical reasons, I'll uh, um, take k to infinity. By the way, you see that uh, this uh, term drops and even the equations become uh, simpler in that case. And uh, presumably we should be able to do better than uh, uh, um, uh, 
just solving it numerically, we should be able to solve it uh, analytically. Um, but uh, what I'll do here is I'll just present the numerical uh, solutions. Uh, okay, so uh, I, so uh, again, so what I'm plotting here is basically it's this age as a function uh, of um, the amplitude that I choose that I, uh, that, I uh, that I take for the um, for the winding mode at infinity. Um, so just I, I want this statement to be more precise. So I take this set of uh, modes. I fix the amplitude. I have one thing that this equation doesn't fix. It's this amplitude. So I fix it and I integrate these equations towards the tip and see what I get. And I'm focusing here on this field because that field is telling us what actually happens to the shape what happens to the shape of the of the cigar because of the, the back reaction of the winding mode? Uh, could you show the previous slide just to be, be to be clear? Because it, it's a bit yes. fast for me. So Nambu Gota action here is really H times D rho D tau, right? Right. So D tau will give you a, a just winding. Yes. Yeah. And ampli by what you call amplitude is prefactor here, right? It's the prefactor. That's okay, right. right. Okay. So this prefactor I cannot fix from that mm -hmm. equation. Yeah. And I play with it, and we see that something interesting happens. And um, so, that, so what I'm trying to do is to present, is to try to explain uh, uh, um, uh, um, what is this uh, transition that takes place. So first of all, let's start with no winding. No winding, it means that age is just a straight line. Okay, and this is the use, this is how the tip looks like. So if I replace age with rho, then I have R2 basically. And you know, this is the standard case. And then I start to increase uh, uh, this amplitude. And there is a, a critical point. And below the critical point, uh, what happens is that um, here nothing dramatic happens, but as I go towards the, the tip, you see that the tip is pushed to the left. It's pushed to the left. As I, as I approach more and more the critical point, it is pushed more and more to the left. So it is as if you know, the cigar has a, a tiny neck that is pushed and it's, it's getting a, 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 a smaller and smaller and eventually it ends. Okay, so this is the ending of the tip. So it is as if the tip got pushed further to the left. If I go uh, above the critical point, then what happens is something similar, but at a certain point, uh, instead of uh, being, so, so you have a minimal uh, uh, size and then it goes up and you hit a singularity. So that minimal size means that there is a, a hole and the, the hole grows and until you hit a singularity, okay? At the critical point, what you can do is you can actually solve this equation of motions uh, analytically, asymptotically. And this is what is being plotted here. Uh, age goes like one over uh, or minus one over rho. And this is this line here. And you can see that it fits uh, uh, nicely with the uh, numerical solutions if rho is small enough. So, this analytic solution is really describing a, a, a cigar with a puncture at the tip. Okay, and this is this puncture that basically goes all the way to infinity and age goes to zero when rho goes to minus infinity. Okay, so there is, so if I, if I uh, uh, 
just a, a look at this set of first order uh, um, equation of motions, then there is clearly a critical point. And that critical point uh, happens at this uh, interesting uh, uh, number. Now, uh, we know that this is the uh, number. So, so we have, uh, like I said, uh, a numerical evidence for that. And we know this um, up to a 10 to the minus 10 or 10 to the minus 11. So we are very sure that this is the number. So the, the critical number. Just to be sure that I understand what you're saying. So are you saying that the back reaction of this field chi kind of creates this function because originally yes, yes. Right. yeah so that's the, that's, that's exactly the, what i'm saying okay the, the back reaction of the winding mode for this particular value is creating a puncture puncture at the tip of the cigar that's bizarre because <laughs> without the puncture the winding mode is kind of un unstable i mean if in some sense uh if you put on the um we just consider Euclidean black hole, Euclidean cigar, winding mode can slip off. But if there is a puncture, it cannot. Is that right? Uh, that's right. But um, even if it can slip off, so even if even if uh, you are uh, even if the amplitude is smaller than the critical amplitude, and you have something like that, then you are absolutely right that the winding can uh, uh, slip off here at the tip, which will get pushed here. But this is not to say that it doesn't have a, 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 an effect in the process. So I think that, uh, um, you know, even if you go back to the, uh, um, to the discussion that we had at the beginning with the um, Polyakov loop and is winding uh, in ADS5, in the black holes in ADS5, then I think that even there, uh, for sure, there is some kind of an effect of the winding mode. It is just, even despite the fact that, you know, that it can pinch off at the tip, um, it is just that we cannot calculate it. And here we can calculate it. So I think that this is, uh, but the fact that there is an effect um it's not uh, i don't think that so the fact that the the the, the winding um can uh, slip off the tip doesn't mean that it doesn't have an effect it's there right okay yeah, yeah i agree it's, but it basically means that you modify the geometry right effectively right. <laughs> right so what we are doing here is we are uh, probing uh, how much the winding mode is going to um to modify the geometry, assuming that the reduction that we made is uh, is correct. Uh, um, yes. So the nice thing about it is that uh, this number is not just a random number that you get uh, by playing uh, with the numerics here, but this is exactly the value that is fixed in string theory in the large scale limit, which is the limit that we took. And uh, like I said at the beginning, uh, the, what is so special about this model is that in string theory, this is the model in which in string theory, we can actually calculate this number. Okay, so I'm, so, uh, I'm not going to present uh, the calculation here because uh, it is based on uh, some uh, heavy work, but I do want to uh, uh, say a couple of words about it. So first of all, this is uh, some work that Givon and Kutasov did and uh, Teshner. So it's uh, so to see this uh, uh, agreement, you, you, we have to really uh, go uh, into this uh, work. And uh, uh, the the only thing that I do want to 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 say is that you know it, it does look a bit strange because if you so so what these guys did was to uh, take advantage of the algebraic structure of the SL2 uh, left times the SL2 right uh, um, and to make uh, some uh, sharp uh, statements about you know, reflection coefficient and uh, relation between uh, different uh, modes in the uh, theory. 
And it's, it, it feels strange that uh, uh, such algebraic uh, 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 construction could give such a strange number. And I just want to uh, uh, show uh, how this comes about. So this is this simple observation. So what they uh, get is, you know, bunch of gamma functions that depend on K. And the reason, uh, the way that you get factors like this is if you have a gamma of one plus one over K and you take all of it to the K, then this is the way that you get this exponent. And uh, this is exactly what happens. So you just take uh, the expressions that uh, these gentlemen uh, found. You should be very uh, careful uh, with the normalization and such. And you get exactly an exact uh, agreement with the numerical uh, factor that, we, uh, that, uh, that I told you about before. <coughs> so, so this comment, uh, uh, so before, uh, so any questions about, because, uh, uh, what, so this agreement, um, this is basically the main result of our paper. So before I go on, I would like to uh, pause for uh, if there are any uh, other questions. Okay, so, <coughs> so, so let me, uh, so, so uh, maybe uh, a couple of months ago, last month, I forget. So uh, this paper appeared in which they made uh, an interesting observation that in, uh, well, among, among other things, of course, that in type two, uh, the orovitz polchinski um, um, uh, 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 classical solution cannot be uh, connected with the uh, black hole solution because of an index obstruction. And uh, there is some discussion about how one can evade this because physically it does feel like the two uh, should be connected, right? If you increase the coupling constant, you have a string star, you would imagine that you would create a black hole. Now, if there is indeed a puncture at the tip of the cigar, then the two are connected because the Witten index of the orovitz polchinski solution and the uh, Witten index of the, of the cigar with a puncture at the tip, uh, both are zero. So this, this problem that was raised by uh, genital is, uh, is uh, uh, um, uh, evaded if there is indeed a tip, if there is indeed a puncture at the tip. Now that puncture, of course, it's not just a puncture, uh, it, there's lots of physics if there is such a puncture and it goes, uh, uh, it is uh, of course related to the black hole entropy and Another thing that happens at that uh, a critical point is uh, that the black hole entropy becomes exactly equal to the winding entropy. So all the, uh, um, so in, like I said at the beginning, in this case, in the Euclidean case, the black hole entropy is derived from the action. It was derived from the action by Gibbons, Gibbons and Hawking. And uh, what you can show is that uh, at this critical uh, point, it is equal to the winding entropy. So uh, the winding entropy, I don't want to get into the details uh, too much, but uh, you can calculate it uh, using the usual uh, um, uh, approach. And this is the expression that you get, and then you can uh, start and plot it as a function of the amplitude um, at infinity. And as you increase the amplitude, uh, you see that so here I'm plotting the ratio of the uh, um, winding entropy to the black hole entropy, this should be A. As I increase and I get to the critical point, then I get one. So it is uh, as if all the uh, black hole entropy is uh, carried by the winding mode. So this is yet another, um, interesting thing about this uh, um, critical point. Uh, what that plot is showing is how, so what is being shown here is uh, how the uh, winding entropy, uh, namely this function is uh, uh, spread 
on the geometry. So rho, as I said, is the distance from the tip, the original tip, okay? So the original tip was here at zero. Now it got, it got pushed all the way to minus infinity, but the entropy is not. So the entropy is still, still remains in this uh, region of order one in string units from the point where there used to be there used to be um, there used to be a, a tip. Um, so uh, I yes. So so um, now what I would like to do in the remaining time is to uh, uh, try and say a few words, uh, probably less than I uh, originally uh, planned to about uh, why we uh, believe that uh, if I now go back to the um, to the uh, uh, Lorentzian black hole, why the information escapes the black hole through this puncture. So this sentence should not be too surprising once you see that the entropy is really one. The, the entropy is really the black hole entropy, but let's see. So it, there, there is still lots of physics to understand and we are just starting to do it. Uh, how uh, this comes about from the Lorentzian point of view. So we, to answer this, we have to uh, know, the, we have to understand the answer to this tricky question. And this tricky, the, this question is what happens to the winding mode when we weak rotate the cigar back to the Lorentzian geometry. And now we have another question is what happens to the puncture? So we know that we analytically continue the cigar, we get the eternal black hole, but what happens when we analytically continue the cigar with the puncture? And the answer is that we get a eternal black hole, but without the future wedge because there is a puncture. So the puncture is here. When you analytically continue, you find nothing here. So, uh, so something, uh, so whatever the answer is to, so the puncture uh, as, I, uh, as we discussed before is because of the back reaction of the winding mode. So now the question uh, um, that I started, that I, so now this question, which is what happened to the winding mode when we weak rotate becomes even more interesting because whatever it is, it should have such a dramatic back reaction that the eternal black hole at least doesn't have an interior. So, uh, so I'll, uh, I don't have too much time, uh, but I would like to say a few words about that. And if I go uh, over time, please uh, uh, stop me. Um, um, so yes, so uh, in short, the answer is that the winding mode becomes an, an instant folded string. And there are two ways to uh, see it. One is again, to use the exact, the power of the exact SL2 modded by one uh, CFT. And the other is to uh, talk about, um, is to see this from an effective description. And uh, so I'll start with this one. Uh, so here, a very useful work was done uh, by uh, Giribet and Nunes. Uh, um, so they made a, a, a beautiful observation. And their observation is that uh, when, you, uh, 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 when you describe the non-perturbative effects in the SL2 modded by one, you can either use uh, the sky field, which is what we uh, talked about before, or you can use a product of chi and chi star, which is, which we call the F, okay? And so there are two dual descriptions and uh, they in a, in, a, in, a, um, in a couple of papers, they show basically that every known exact answer that you have uh, in SL2, you can uh, get also by having this guy as, um, as a screening field. So what is special about this is that this is a singlet of the SL2 uh, affine algebra and, uh, and you can let it condense and, and 
you can instead let this guy condense and what they show is that you get the same answer. Um, I'll skip this and uh, what uh, we did is to um, basically uh, realize that there is a very clear um, or very precise uh, target space interpretation for their uh, field. And the target space interpretation is that on the world sheet, you have a product of two fields, winding plus and winding minus. And the way that you should think about it from the target space point of view is that if I have a winding going in this direction and the winding going in that direction, then what you can have is they can form a folded string, a string that folds uh, towards the black hole. Um, and um, basically uh, uh, what this is telling us is that um, this field is a folded string that is filling the, uh, the, 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 the black hole or the future of the black hole. Uh, and this sounds uh, very strange when you think about it. So there are, there are lots of there are lots of questions that come to mind. First of all, is why are there folded strings uh, inside the black hole? So why shouldn't you know, like in GR, there, there'll be nothing inside the black hole? Can we understand all of that from a, a low energy perspective? And how many folded strings are there? And what do they do to the black hole interior, etc.? So um, uh, I, the, so we, we have an answer to um, well to most of this, and I um, don't have. Uh, uh, I'm afraid. Uh, uh, so it's it's really up to you guys. Uh, so how, mu how much more time do I have? Well, at least five minutes, but usually we leave some time for questions. Uh, I see. So uh, uh, in that case, uh, uh, I see. Uh, uh, so let me um, see. Yes. So so I'll do something which is probably not the right thing to do, but I'll try to focus on how many folded strings are there. So uh, uh, and I'll. Um, I'll skip all of that. And there are three ways to try. Uh, so, so it would be great to be able to calculate from first principles how many for the instant folded strings uh, are there behind the black hole. We are still not quite there yet, but there are three uh, um, indirect ways to do that. One, I didn't have time to discuss this, but the trigger for the creation of the instant folded strings is the uh, time like linear dilaton. And if there are enough instant folded strings, then the dilaton will become constant. Uh, so this will fix the number. You can ask how many instant folded strings you need for the dilaton to become constant. This is the thing that I really wanted to talk about. And they have a very uh, strange uh, um, energy momentum tensor associated with them. It's, it's the fact that they are created instantly that is uh, uh, irresponsible for this funny energy momentum tensor that they have. Um, so, the, so if this is a folded string and you try to fall inside the folded string, then it will push you. It will push you back in time, and it will also give you a kick. And what is funny about it is the amount of time that you get pushed back is proportional to the impact power material. So if you have enough of them, then you can basically they create a region that cannot be penetrated. So you try to. At this point, you get back ill, and the boost parameter is going to push you in this direction. You try to fall in air, you get pushed here, and you basically you cannot penetrate this. And this is very much in the spirit of what we uh, uh, said uh, that the uh, 
weak rotation of the puncture is the region is such that the that the future horizon, that the future wedge simply does not exist. So it's funny that the instant form the strength they know about this uh, this effect that they should cause, that they should create. Another thing is that there, there are some entropy considerations that we can do. Uh, I'm not going to do any of that, but I will just I do want to make this uh, um, uh, statement that calculating uh, the number of instant folded strings in either way gives you the exact same answer, which is two pi over a k g string squared, which is, a, a inter this is an interesting uh, observation. So let me uh, conclude. So, um, so at least in this model, uh, I think that we can um, safely say that there are evidence that uh, uh, the string excitations uh, uh, alter drastically GR physics. Winding modes, they do it at the tip of a large black hole. They generate uh, a puncture. Instant folded strings, they do uh, the same at the horizon of a black hole. And hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, much of that is relevant for other black holes. But um, of course, we, uh, we don't have right now uh, the machinery um, to, 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 to explore this. Okay. Yeah, thank you. OK, thank you. Uh, are there any questions? Okay, since there are no questions, so let's thank the speaker. Okay, thank you, thank guys. You yeah, thank you. Thank you.